This is a song about a man I met in Keene, New Hampshire. I now live near Keene, New Hampshire, in Harrisville, New Hampshire. Has anybody been to Harrisville? Yeah. <laughs> you have to shop in the uh, mill shop and take weaving classes. I don't weave or knit. And wool makes me itch. <laughs> but it's pretty. So anyway, this is about a man named Dino Hoopas who directs the barbershop group up there. And his family moved him to Keene during the Depression. And they bought a house that they turned into a restaurant that is now Henry David's. So if you've ever eaten out in Keene, you know what that is. And it was, at the time, a good deal because it was in between um, a regular set of railroad tracks and a siding. And not many people wanted to live there. It says, of course, it goes like this. me back to when we lived in the house between the tracks. That's your part. You want to try it? Ooh, clickety-clack. Ooh, rickety-rack. That's the sound that always takes me back to when we lived in the house between the tracks. You know, usually the lights are out in the audience and you can't see people. And all your mouths are moving at exactly the same time. <laughs> it was in the Great Depression when my family moved to Keene, where we got a great deal on a house because it was between two sets of railroad tracks, but it was large and grand. Half home, half restaurant, the finest in the land. Mom would be the waitress, and Dad would be the cook. But we would all pitch in because that was what it took. Though we were washing dishes, clearing tables, sweeping floors, I know that we were happier than we'd ever been before. Train sounds. Ooh, clickety-clack. Ooh, rickety-rack. That's the sound that always takes me back to when we lived in the house between the tracks. We listened to the radio, that's how we got the news of the bombing of Pearl Harbor when we entered World War II. Some trains full of soldiers were passing every day, so we packed the soldier sandwiches to eat along the way. That was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> the most exciting time was when the circus came through town. They'd park outside my window with the animals and clowns. I could hear the lions and the tigers roar at dusk. And once an elephant broke the window of my bedroom with its tusk. <laughs> else does take place in Waldo, Florida. It used to be a big railroad junction, but since um, the day of the rail has declined and the day of the plane has increased, um, there isn't much traffic through Waldo, just two trains a day, one going north and one going south. And I was getting on the northbound train, and this is, uh, they're almost all true stories tonight. Um, but if they're not, I probably won't tell you. <laughs> That's all you need to know. It doesn't really have a chorus, but the first verse repeats at the end, so you can sing that if you want. There's only 
two trains that still stop at Waldo, north at midnight, south at dawn, and when you hear that midnight whistle blowing, you'll know that I am gone. We walk the empty streets of Waldo. No one walks out after nine. And we read the history of the railroad at Waldo in the playground on a cast iron sign. And the moonlight shone on the white church of Waldo and cast a shadow of an oak across the grass. We smelled mimosa, honeysuckle, and roses while we waited for the long hours to pass. Then we said, Goodbye on the platform in Waldo, neath the street lamp that blinked off and on. And then we heard that midnight whistle blowing, the train moved and I was gone. Now there's only two trains that still stop at Waldo, north at midnight, south at dawn, when you hear that midnight whistle blowing, you'll know that I am gone. Oh, Larry Younger, would you come up here with your guitar for a minute? Um, I've got loads of friends waiting in the audience for who knows what. <laughs> Um, but since we're doing train songs, I thought Larry would come up and um, do with me one of the first songs that we ever did together, which is called The Railroad Blues. Nice and car, who wrote it? Careful folklorists, both of us. <laughs> you want to sit or stand? Oh. They're set for both. <laughs> yeah, you want to stand? Did you just get it? <laughs> uh, why don't you talk about this later, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> what key do we play this in? I have no idea.
I got the railroad blues, the railroad blue blues, ain't got the railroad fare. Nowhere to go, nowhere to go, go, go. nobody waiting for me there. I'm gonna catch me a freight train just as sure as you're born. Ride so far, you think I'm dead and gone. I got the railroad blues, the railroad blue blues. Ain't got the railroad fare, you heard me, mister. Ain't got the railroad fare. I got the railroad blues, the railroad blue blues, ain't got the railroad fare. Nowhere to go, nowhere to go, go, go. nobody waiting for me there. I'm gonna ride all night just to keep from sleeping, sleep all day just to keep from weeping. Got the railroad blues, the railroad blues. <laughs> you heard me missing. Ain't got the railroad fare. Play it, Larry. <laughs> Railroad blues, the railroad blue blues, ain't got the railroad fare. Nowhere, nowhere to go, nowhere to go, go. Nobody waiting for me there. I'm gonna ride all night just to keep from sleeping. Sleep all day just to keep from weeping. Got the railroad blues, the railroad blue blues, ain't got the railroad fare. You heard me, mister. Ain't got the railroad fair. Um, because it's such a treat for us to get to play together, we're going to do another song. Um, this is from the Cherokee Marching Band. Is that from Georgia? No? The Georgia Marching Band from Cherokee? No. It is a marching band. A fife and drum band from Georgia. Georgia. Anybody here from Alabama? Anybody here from Mississippi? Oh. No, it's from Alabama. <laughs> Chevrolet, if you do something for me, if you do something for me. I don't want no Chevrolet, I don't want no Chevrolet, I don't want no Chevrolet, and you can't do nothing for me now, you don't do nothing for me. <laughs> Show. 
Make it another six months, they'll celebrate their 38th anniversary. But I wrote this for their 32nd.
that's the shanty sing in the chorus. Is anybody in the wrong place? <laughs> My parents, they waltzed on the boardwalk in Asbury Park late one spring. While my sisters and I stood embarrassed, amazed they could do such a thing, and they danced around on the boardwalk as the sunlight danced on the sea. They danced to the tunes of the merry-go-round in front of my sisters and me. Now sometimes my parents would quarrel and argue and throw things and curse, but they never stopped loving each other so I guess that it could have been worse and they danced around on the boardwalk as the sunlight danced on the sea they danced to the tunes of the merry-go-round in front of my sisters and me. Now sometime, someday, I hope I'll get married to a man with some virtues, some faults, and sometimes we'll laugh, sometimes quarrel, but when we're on a boardwalk, we'll waltz just like they danced around on the boardwalk as the sunlight danced on the sea. They danced to the tunes of the merry-go-round in front of my sisters and me. They danced to the tunes of the merry-go-round in front of my sisters and me. sing a song that are both about death and how that, uh, what I think that yeah. affects me and us. She stood bewildered on the island, crying in the shoulder-high grass, daisies swaying in the wind. Suddenly bereft of a mate, she calls and calls to him, looking north and west, east and south. But this is no game of hide and seek, no teasing courtship dance, their offspring instantly fatherless, and she cannot remember a time when they were not together, partners in love and travel, in work and flight. One car after another, racing for home in the dimming light, pounds over the body, reducing still further the strength, awkward grace, instinct, and intelligence to scraps of flesh, feather, and bone, returned prematurely to earth. I cried with her, her sudden deprivation mine, our fragility, our love always threatened by indifferent violence. John died in the garden 
with the sunlight full upon him, with a soft spring breeze blowing, and the lilacs fully blooming, resting in the new grass. The bees were just awakening. <coughs> Quiet of the morning, the birds were just returning. And who would have kept him a year in a hospital bed, unable to speak or to move? And who? Tied up to tubing, what would that prove? Would that prove love? Barbara found him in the garden, and she thought her heart was broken to know he died before her. She'd have to live without him. But they'd often talked about it. And she knew he would have wanted to die sharply and swiftly in the beauty of. song about a jazz musician. This is a true story. It's just that I don't know who it's about. I got it from an interview I heard on the radio. I was so excited about what he was saying, I just forgot to find out who was saying it. <laughs> Smoke in the air and the neon lights flashing. Men with gold watch chains and Fancy cigars, fancier women, big voices, big smiles. Here's my fancy women now. Big music that heats up the night. Jazz like icebergs, jazz like fire, jazz like thunder on a late summer's night. Jazz Jazz like camellias in 
the silver moonlight. Joe bought an old sax and he took a few lessons, hitched rides with the gamblers in their smooth rolling cars, drank with the women and followed the jazz men through the streets and the Kansas City bars, playing jazz like icebergs, jazz like fire, jazz like thunder on a late summer's night, jazz like neon, electric and wild, jazz like camellias in the silver Then the church folk took over and they busted the city. Joe married his sweetheart and went into sales. The jazz men and gamblers all of Kansas City on one landlit street, his long saxophone wails. Jazz like icebergs, jazz like fire, jazz like thunder on a late summer's night, jazz like neon, electric and wild, jazz like camellias in the silver seen Christina. This is Christina Olson. And her show is tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow 3 30 next door. And on her right and mine is Joyce Woodson. Now Joyce doesn't have a time slot this year, so uh, I'd like to give her a peace of mind. Yeah, I was hoping you would. on the East Coast. It's really fun, fun, fun. I danced four different, entirely different kinds of dances today and I'm just having a blast. So really, really a good introduction to the East Coast. Do you want to sing on Calvin's Wall? Sure. This is a song I wrote. It was my first protest song. And, uh, Um, oh, this is appropriate. I went to a folk dance. <laughs> I went to a folk dance at a club in Los Angeles um, about oh, six years ago, and they played a waltz, and I love waltzes. I spent some time in Sweden learning to waltz the right way. <laughs> anyway, this is my protest because none of the fellows there knew how to waltz, and I went home mad as heck. I wrote this song. Here we go. <laughs> Young man, I advise that you listen to me When going to court your bride-to-be When you take her along to that rodeo dance You better know how to waltz You can waltz to three to the Tennessee waltz Two, three, how can you hold her without her? You don't need to say a word at all When a cowboy can waltz <laughs> Oh, you may yodel in your best whiskey voice You can try the last 
lasso the girl of your choice but if you don't know how to waltz you won't hold on to her long you can try a two-step or two you can ply her with jim beam or brew but when the light turns low and she turns to you you better know how to waltz you can waltz two three to the tennessee waltz two three how can you hold her without her hand on your shoulder waltz two three to the blue danube straps you don't need to say When a cowboy can waltz If you'd rather be straddling that gal who's sad sad <laughs> You better learn how to waltz <laughs> Christina Olson and Joyce Woodson. Thank you very much for doing that. That's fun. <laughs> and that made me think of another song about a courtship that begins with some dancing. On the veranda, watch the sunset or the bay. Then he asked me for a tango, and we danced the night away. He had eyes just like brown velvet, he had skin like satin sheets, and as we danced there to the music. His hips swayed with the conga beat. <laughs> Courted by a Venezuelan While the sea was at low tide We talked of how we'd go sailing Across the ocean deep and wide We talked of pasts and presents About our jobs and families he had a ranch with many servants and parrots roosting in the trees. He said, come live in Venezuela, have my children be my wife, be the mistress of my villa, and the pleasure of my life. Courted by a Venezuelan, making plans to be his bride tickets bought to go a sailing across the ocean deep and wide well he returned to venezuela wrote me letters every day said things were ready at the villa and he would meet me on the quay so i packed up my belongings and I shipped them ocean freight Then I received a telegram And it only told me wait Jilted by a Venezuelan Now I'll never be his bride And I'll never go a sailing Across the ocean deep and wide He wrote his mother had Although he begged her on his knees, said I should find another sweetheart and someday forgive him, please. Well, I can find another sweetheart if I want one bad enough. 
up, but I've sublet my apartment, <laughs> and I've shipped off all my stuff, jilted by a Venezuelan. Across the ocean deep and wide Well, I expected to feel angry But instead I felt relieved Well, I'd been hoping for a hero So I was easily deceived Still I've come to some conclusions While staring at my empty shelves Instead of waiting to be rescued, we could be rescuing ourselves. Jilted by a Venezuelan, everybody, so I'll never be his bride. I still can go sailing across the ocean deep and wide. Jilted by a Venezuelan. the ocean deep and wide. is here right now. And they danced by the light of a sparkling bobby sock Cause the theme of the prom was the history of rock And after the prom, Joel kissed her at the door And he said, do you know what that kiss was for? She said, no, I don't, but you kiss just fine And he said, what it means is that you are mine And she said, no, I'm not, and she rushed inside And on the way home Joel Bernstein cried. She cried too and wrote a letter to Miz saying this much I know I'm mine, not his. <laughs> when Erica Levine was 23, her lover said, Erica, marry me. This relationship is answering a basic need and I'd like to have it legally guaranteed. For without your precious love, I would surely die. So why don't we make it legal, said Erica, why? Basic needs at your age should be met by you. I'm your lover, not your mother. Let's be careful what we do. <laughs> for if ever I should marry, I will marry to grow. Not for tradition or protection or possession, no. I love you, but your needs are a very different issue. Then he cried, and Erica handed him a tissue. <laughs> when 
Erica was 30, she was talking with Lou, discussing and deciding what they wanted to do. When we marry, should we move into your place or mine? Yours is rent control, but mine is on the green line. <laughs> and they argued and they talked, and they finally didn't care. So they rented an apartment near Davis Square. <laughs> the wedding was a simple one, they wanted it that way. And they thought a lot about the things that they would choose to say. I will live with you and love you, but I'll never call you mine. The judge pronounced them married, and everyone had wine. And a happy ever afterlife is not the sort they got, but they tended to be happy more often than not. songwriters and tune writers and singers are all in this room tonight. And how great it is to have a festival where everybody can get together under one roof and sweat. <laughs> it's really important. So um, I'm just trying to find something suitable to end with. Um, and this would maybe have been better to start with, but too bad. This is a... <laughs> You'll laugh at anything. <laughs> this is a love song to a mathematician, and you'll know why. The afternoon light is just fading As I gaze out the kitchen at the view There's apple trees telephone wires and some birds and I'm 3,000 miles from you. It's unusually cold here in Venice. Last night it dropped down to 32. So I slept under four borrowed down sleeping beds. 3,000 miles from you. Well, it's 25 cents for a letter. It's a buck for a long distance call. And it's $300 to fly back again. And I can't afford that at all. It's a block to the 7-Eleven. It's a mile to the ocean so blue. It's a month till I get in my car and I drive those 3,000 miles to you. Now it's 29 cents for a letter. It's a buck for a long distance call and it's three hundred dollars to fly back again and I can't afford that at all it's a block to the 7-eleven it's a mile to the ocean so blue it's a mile Till I get in my car and I drive those 3,000 miles to you. 3,000 miles to you.
for coming and say that there are some tapes at the um, performers booth and I also have some with me so if you want to meet me in the hall especially if you're after the new short sister